Red light therapy is the latest wellness trend lighting up social media. Influencers say these devices can improve skin health and even slow aging, but do they really work? Dr. Alexis Young, a dermatologist with Hackensack Meridian Health, is here to talk all about it. And doctor, you know, for those of us who are skeptical, skeptical, can you break down the science in simple terms? Sure, absolutely. So I'm the first one to be skeptical of these at-home devices, but this uh, technology is actually really exciting. So the red light or the near-infrared light is absorbed into the middle layer of the skin where it basically stimulates cells to send signals to, to um, grow collagen, elastin, anti-inflammatory molecules. So the, the uses for red light are um, multiple. Uh, we're using it for wound healing, skin rejuvenation, hair growth, um, anti-inflammatory properties, pain relief. Um, it's, it's a really exciting time for this technology. It looks so wild, you know, when you see all the videos and the pictures. So what are the realistic results, you know, people can expect at home from these masks for concerns like fine lines, skin texture, even acne? And then how long does it usually take to see a noticeable difference? So it's not overnight. This is a long process um, because we're basically stimulating growth of collagen and that doesn't happen overnight. That's um, stimulating the enzymes to work over months at a time. So um, it's it's the treatments are typically several treatments over several months, uh, several treatments a week over several months. Um, but ultimately it should result in um, fine lines, um, more skin hydration, firmer skin. Um, for hair growth, it can take up to six months to see the results, but we have seen good data for that. Um, but people have to be patient. And what are your tips for, you know, using it correctly? So follow the manufacturer instructions. Mm. That's a huge um, key. More is not necessarily better. We actually have strong data to, to show that if you use too much of it, it can actually cause the opposite effect. So it can um, inhibit collagen growth if you use it too, for too much. It can cause inflammation if you use it too much. So follow the instructions of the manufacturer. That's my number one tip, okay? If anyone has any um, concerns about like hyperpigmentation, pigmentary concerns, this might not be the treatment for you um, because it could make those problems worse, especially in darker skin types. And I worry about um, eye protection for patients mm -hmm. with this. You really want to protect the eyes. Most of the masks I've seen have open holes for the eyes. Um, and so what I usually recommend is to have the mask sit tight against the face and turn it on after it's in place and just keep your eyes closed for the duration of the treatment. That's the safest way to protect the, the eyes um, from the light directly. And you, typically the treatments are from five to 10 minutes. So, you know, it's a good time to kind of force yourself to relax with the mask on. And doctor, what should consumers look for to make sure they're buying a mask that's both effective and safe? So try to look for a manufacturer who has a history in the, the medical device space um, because then you can kind of count on it being a high quality product. If you're looking for a term that says FDA cleared, um, these devices are considered to be relatively low risk for at home use. So they don't go through the same FDA approval process that like lasers do in doctor's offices. Um, and so FDA cleared, that term should mean that they at least adhere to some sort of safety standards. So that's what you wanna look for. If something, if, it's, if an at home device says it's FDA approved, run the other direction because that's false advertising um, and it's not true. They don't get that, that type of um, labeling. Um, so, so that's the, the biggest thing to look for. Also, more is not necessarily better in terms of like wavelengths of light. You're looking for, we have the most data for red light, near infrared light, um, for skin rejuvenation, and then blue light would be effective for acne. Other than that, any other color that's sort of touted in the, um, in the label, it, it's probably not doing very much. All right, let's go back to hair because you mentioned it just a bit ago. What does the science say about using red light combs or helmets to help stimulate hair growth? So we actually have the most data for efficacy for hair growth more than any other area um, with in, in the red light category. So. Um, the red light actually, it prolongs the hair growth cycle. So you're looking at longer, thicker, denser hair, um, which is really exciting for like um, patients who have had chemotherapy and they need to you know, boost their hair growth post chemotherapy, um, patients with hair loss of aging, all other sort of scarring, um, uh, hair loss conditions. This could be a really useful adjunct for these patients and it's safe, it's um, convenient, they can do it at home and it can be um, inconvenient Conjunction with other therapies that they're getting for their hair.
Wow. I, I, I'm still blown away that it works because it's just so wild looking and we've been seeing it. But Dr. Alexis Young with Hackensack Meridian Health, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.